Hello friends, Mike Adams here with Audacity Training. In this video, I want to add a real-time compressor to a piece of audio that I've, that I've already recorded. Take a look at this screen. Here's the piece of audio that I'm talking about, and we want to put a compressor on it. The reason that we want to put a compressor on it is because these spots right here, where the audio is a little bit louder, that one there and this one especially, we want to bring that audio level back down so it's more consistent with the quieter parts of our audio. That means that the end user won't have to worry about adjusting the volume up and down as they're listening to our audio. We don't want them to have to do that. We want them to have a good listening experience. So we're going to reduce the audio on these louder parts. And we're going to do that through a compressor, but not just a compressor, Audacity's built-in real-time compressor. Real-time is non-destructive. That means that the actual waveform that we see here in our project isn't going to be manipulated by what we do because what we're doing is in real-time only. And it's not applied until we export the audio. And it's only applied to the exported audio. It's not applied to anything within our project because it's real-time. Now, in order to get to that, I'm going to click on the effects tab here and you'll see I've already added a compressor here. If I do this window, if I do this drop down arrow, I can go to uh, Audacity and right here is where I selected that compressor. That compressor is already there. The compressor effect is turned on. I can turn it off here if I want to disable it, but it's on. If I click on the compressor itself, it opens up this window and this window has some settings in it that we need to talk about briefly. The threshold is the dB level at which I want to start applying compression. In this case, it's a negative 10. In other words, when the audio starts to peak out at a negative 10, the compressor is going to activate and it's going to push that audio back down by an amount that I tell it to do here, which we'll get to in just a second. Minus 10 Normally, I have this set at a, at a negative 12 or so if the audio is, you know, decent. I don't put a lot of compression on it. I don't put a lot of processing on my audio at all. But since I'm teaching something here, I want to make sure that we see the effect. So I'm going to bring this down. Let's bring this down to a negative, uh, what, do you, what do you say? Let's bring it down to a negative 15. And I'm just going to come in here and type a zero. So at, at a negative 15, we're going to start compressing. When the audio, the peak of the audio hits a negative 15, we're going to add compression to it. The makeup gain is do we want to amplify after we do the effect? And no, I don't want to amplify. I'm going to leave it at zero. The knee width is the width of this knee right here. In other words, how steep or how uh, gradual is my compression going to be applied? If I take this slider, and I slide it down to zero, you can see that our knee is pretty sharp. If I bring it back up to where it's more gradual, you can see the slope becomes gradual. My compression is added more gradually. I'm going to leave it at five because I want to make sure that we can see the results here uh, as we're going through this. 5.1, let's put a zero in there just to be consistent. The ratio is telling the compressor when I reach the threshold that I want to start compressing, how far down am I pushing it? This is set at 10. That means I'm at a 10 to 1 ratio. And that's pretty extreme for spoken word. Normally, I would suggest between a negative or between a 2 and a 4. So if we bring this down to 4, and again, let's put a 0 in there just to be consistent. This is telling Audacity that for every dB above my threshold, which is a negative 15 in this example, for every dB above my threshold, I want to compress 4 dB. So I'm going to bring that down, kind of extreme, I guess, but I want to uh, do it for training purposes. I want to make sure that we can see what's going on. And then the look ahead is how far is the compressor looking ahead to uh, compress? It, it's slightly looking ahead, one millisecond in this instance. It's getting ready to pounce. It's getting ready to do its thing. The attack, I'm going to leave at 30. The release, I'm going to leave at 150. If we make that attack too quick, we'll be able to hear the compressor kicking in, and we don't want to do that. This bottom window where it says awaiting playback is just that. The effect is waiting playback. When I press play, 
our waveform is actually going, or at least part of the waveform, the peaks, are going to um, play through this window, and we're going to see the compression applied to it in real time. doesn't affect the audio that's in our track. Remember, this is real time. This is a real time preview of what, of what uh, our compression is going to look like. You can see that I've got output selected here, and I've got actual compression. That means that what we're going to see in this bottom window is the output waveform, what it's going to look like compressed. And then at the top, there's going to be a yellow line here that's going to fluctuate. It's going to go up and down depending on the volume of our waveform. And it's going to show us the actual compression being applied. I could talk about this all day, but let's push play because it'll be easier to see there. So I'm going to push play right now. This will be a track that I'm going to demonstrate compression on. So I'm going to get a little bit loud right here. Now you can see where I got loud. You can see that yellow line came down a little bit. We're starting to compress right there. Let's continue. And then I'm going to get a little bit softer. There's really not much compression, if any, going on in those soft spots. Let's continue. And then I'm going to get a bit louder right in here. I had trouble talking right there or something. But you can see the compression is added more here because we've got a louder spot. So we're putting more compression in uh, at, at, this, at this particular point than we have so far in the track. And then I'm going to get softer. And let's stop right there and see what we can do with this. Okay, I forgot to tell you. I think I forgot to tell you. I've got this looped. So it'll just keep playing back, playing through it until I tell it not to play, which is what we want. So let's talk about this a little bit. As we saw compression coming through, we see that yellow line coming down, showing us that it's pushing the audio down. On the quieter parts, it didn't really do it. But let's do one more thing. Let's rewind this again, and let's put input on it. And this is telling us, not only are we seeing the output waveform of what it's going to look like after compression, but we're going to see the input waveform before the compressor is applied. So let me push, push play on this one. This will be a track that I'm going to demonstrate compression on. So I'm going to get a little bit loud right here. Okay, let's stop right there for just a moment. Now remember, I've got input selected here. If I deselect it, I only see the output waveform. If I select it, the input waveform is here, but it's in a lighter color so that I can see the difference between pre-compression, pre say that 10 times, and post-compression. So I'm going to continue playing, and then I'm going to get a little bit softer. And then we're going to get a bit louder right in here. Now that's a little more extreme. We can see the waveform pre-compression, and then we see it post-compression, and it brought it down a considerable amount. So let's continue. I'm going to get softer, and let's stop right there and see what we can do with this. Now you'll see that on the quieter parts of the track, the compression really wasn't applied. It's trying to bring those louder parts more in line with the quieter parts. That's the point or the purpose of a compressor. If I turn on the target compression, the target compression is what Audacity thinks would be the ideal compression level as I apply this effect. So let's leave that on and let's continue to play through here. This will be a track that I'm going to demonstrate compression on. So I'm gonna get a little bit loud right here. So you can see the ideal target compression as opposed to the real-time compression that's actually going on it. Again, we're not getting extreme with our compressor. We don't want to get too extreme. The more processing we put on a file, the more processed it sounds. And so we just want to tweak it enough to bring those loud levels more in line with um, the quieter levels. Let's continue. Then I'm going to get a little bit softer. And then I'm going to get a bit louder right in here. And then I'm going to get softer. And let's stop right there. Okay, so we stopped right there. Now let's get let's do something a little more extreme. We have our threshold at a negative 15 right now. Let's bring our threshold down to a negative 20. And let's see what that does. Again, that's pretty extreme for spoken word. Really, it's kind of extreme for anything. But let's bring it down to a negative 20. And let's uh, play back through this and see what that'll do. This will be a track that I'm going to demonstrate compression on. So I'm going to get a little bit loud right here. And then I'm going to get a little bit softer. And then I'm going to get a bit louder right in here. And then I'm going to get... So you see that those, that really loud part, it, it's really compressing. I'm going to turn off the target compressor for just a moment. And I'm going to rewind this and let's play it through again. 
This will be a track that I'm going to demonstrate compression on. So I'm going to get a little bit loud right here, and then I'm going to get a little bit softer, and then I'm going to get a bit louder right in here, and then I'm going to get softer. And let's stop right there and see what we can do with it. Now you'll see that on the softer parts, a little bit of compression went on, a little bit more than before. That's because we uh, increased the threshold or decreased the threshold, depending on your point of view, to a negative 20 dB. So it's compressing sooner than it was before. Now, what I want to do is close this window out. Let's go ahead and rewind this. And again, as a reminder, as a real-time effect, it didn't affect our waveform in our project. It looks the same. It doesn't affect it until we export it. So let's export it right now, shall we? And then let's bring it back in here and let's compare the before and the after and see what the compressor actually did. So let's export this audio. We're going to export it to my computer. We're going to call it compressor.wave. And let's export it. We're going to overwrite what's there. And then I'm going to come up to my Finder window. Again, I'm on a Mac. So we're going to come up to our, our Finder window here. And we're going to get on over here to Audacity Training, to the compressor. And there's our compressor file right there, I do believe. And then once we have that compressor file selected, we're going to go ahead and drag it back into Audacity. It's going to drag it in here. I'm going to let it go. And let's get back to our window. And now you can see the differences. The original file here, considerably louder than the compressed file in both cases. What we've successfully done here is we brought these louder, louder portions more in line with the quieter portions. And that enabled us to have a better listening experience all the way around. Let's solo this bottom track. Let's get this top one out of the way here momentarily. And let's listen. This will be a track that I'm going to demonstrate compression on. So I'm going to get a little bit loud right here. And then I'm going to get a little bit softer. And then I'm going to get a bit louder right in here. And then I'm going to get softer. And let's stop right there and see what we can do with this. So that's a lot better. The audio level is a lot better. It's more consistent end to end which means that our end user is going to have a better listening experience. So I hope that that helps you there. I hope that uh, seeing this in action uh, will help you in applying real-time effects within Audacity. Again, these are non-destructive effects, and I encourage you to use them as much as you can. And they're not applied until we export the audio. Our original track is unaffected. It's untouched, which is a step above destructive editing. So I'm going to let you go for now. And until next time, y'all take care.